What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today, since it's rainy outside, we're going to go in and put together a list of what you need to build your own DIY powder coating oven. Let's get to it. So after checking some things out and looking at some of our videos, some of our best performing videos are actually our videos about building our powder coating oven. And we get a ton of questions either on the channel or in the Facebook group, this business of powder coating, which you can join by clicking the link in the description. But we get a lot of questions about materials that are being used. What exactly do you need? Is there a checklist out there? So we decided to go ahead and make a checklist for you. If you're trying to build or want to build your own DIY powder coating oven at home. Now, of course, depending on the size of the oven that you want to build, the amount of this material will vary per each build. There is a basic checklist of items that you need if you're building your own powder coating oven at home. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So no matter what size of oven you're going to build, like I was saying, there's certain items that you're going to need to be able to build this oven. Now, there are some links for Amazon products in in the description if you use those links they are affiliate links so they do help support the channel if you purchase anything from Amazon uh, while using those links what we're going to talk about is the materials that you need to build an oven similar to ours there are other ways that you can build an oven this is what we found is most comfortable for us easy and it really is cost effective we were able to build our first four foot by four foot by five foot oven including purchasing some tools for around thirteen hundred dollars we had never built anything like this before and we were able to do it in just about a week's time so if you think about how much a four foot by four foot by five foot oven costs from different oven manufacturers and you look at the processing time of five to eight weeks just for processing then delivery so you you're looking at getting delivery anywhere between six and eight weeks, six and nine weeks down the road. And you're also paying three times that amount. So you really can build your own oven that works great. We've never had any problems with ours, even when we built the extension. You can build an oven that works great using items like this and you're definitely going to save yourself some time, have an operating oven faster, and you're going to save yourself some money over purchasing from most of these oven manufacturers. So you're going to need metal studs just like these. Now, you can purchase these at Home Depot or Lowe's. They're considered usually considered commercial studs. We did get ours the regular size of a 2x4, so we got ones that were about 8 foot long, although you can get them longer. We got ones that were about 8 foot long, and we cut them down, and it was, I believe, 16 gauge or um, even 18 gauge steel, and it was basically the 2x4 size that is available. You can choose to use wider ones or skinnier ones if you want. The thing is, is you don't want to use ones that are much skinnier than this because when we get to the insulation, you're going to see that the insulation is a little bit thicker. So you're going to want a good thickness. So the 2x4 one is suggested as we used. So these are going to vary in price depending on where you're at, but these are going to be the main frame of your oven. You're going to need 18 gauge sheet steel like this. Now I was looking at Metal, Deep, Metal Depot online and as you can see here the price for a four foot by eight foot sheet is like $170. I'm not looking at it right now as we're recording this. So this picture was taken beforehand, but you can see where the price is. And I'm sure that there's a shipping charge there as well. So you might want to look for metal suppliers in your area to be able to get this as cheap as you want. You're going to want enough to be able to do the inside part of the oven and skin the outside part. Now, if you want to save some money, you don't have to skin the outside part right away. If you notice in many of our videos we did not skin the outside part now with the outside part skinned it does help hold in heat a little better and you don't have to worry about the insulation falling out and it just looks a lot more appealing but if you want to start out and you just have the money like we did to go ahead and only skin the inside that is something that you can do just a little side note as well to save a little bit of money on material if you have a nice thick flat concrete floor you 
do not have to build a bottom in your oven. We didn't when we started out. We have one now, but when we started out, we didn't. That will help save you a little bit of money. Fasteners. Of course, you're going to need to hold this oven together. Now, you can use regular nuts and bolts, or you can use self-tapping screws, which make it very easy if you're using self-tapping screws. Nuts and bolts, you have to drill out the hole, and then you have to tighten each bolt down. It could take a little bit longer. Now, there is a process that's in between, and it's a lot better. One, nuts and bolts can get loose because the heating and contracting of the oven. Two, self-tapping screws can also, and when the metal continues to expand and contract, those self-tapping screws, the holes there can expand and contract, and the next thing you know, screws are coming loose. They're not holding tight. Over time, your oven can start to just fall apart. What we chose to use is rivets. Now, rivets do take a little bit longer than self-tapping screws because you do have to pre-drill a hole just like bolts, but if you've got a pneumatic rivet gun like we've got, it is very easy on the hands, and it works quite quickly after you have have the holes drilled and with rivets you don't have to worry about the heat expanding and contracting and the rivets falling out if they're installed correctly. So you can use any of these methods but we feel that rivets are the easiest ones for us. And we didn't go with steel rivets, we went with aluminum rivets because the oven's not even getting hot enough to mess them up. We haven't had any issues. Mineral wool insulation. Mineral wool insulation is the type of insulation that they use in ovens, and I believe they also use it in refrigerators. It is a very good high dense insulation, and it's uh, it's made for really high heat, uh, and it's a very good um, barrier block, I guess you can say. We lined everything with, with mineral wool insulation. I thought it was going to be extremely expensive. It's actually not. You can pick it up at most Lowe's or Home Depot. You can also order it online on Amazon. There is an affiliate link in the description if you choose to do that. And note, do not use fiberglass insulation. Even if it is made for high heat, it can catch fire. Do not use fiberglass insulation. Please, it'll be very dangerous go with mineral wool insulation. You're going to need a heat source. Now this can be a gas heater, whether it's propane or natural gas, or it can be electric elements. It doesn't matter which one you choose. For us, we've seen that there's positives and negatives about both of them. For instance, if you're running electric elements, what you're gonna find is that you're kind of limited to the amount of power that you have running to the building or running on that breaker. So if you wanna build a really big oven, it's going to take a lot of elements. Also, for the most part, electricity is a bit more expensive than propane. And well, actually it's probably a bit cheaper than propane, but it's a bit more expensive in most places than natural gas. Um, another bummer about propane is you can run out of propane, so if you don't have an extra tank with you, you might be in the middle of a project like has happened to us, and you run out of propane, and you have to stop the project and go pick up propane. We've actually had it to where there wasn't any propane where we usually do our propane exchange, so we had to turn around and, you know, wait for the next day. So propane can be kind of a negative, but it definitely works well, and it's kind of easy to get off the ground if you're using for, say, a Mr heater, torpedo heater, or something like that, because it's all inclusive. You've got the heater, you just hook the propane to it, and you're up and ready to go. So you're going to need a heat source. Decide which is going to be best for you and which is going to be best for your oven. If you don't want to use a torpedo heater, you can use a Carlin burner or something like that, which can also be hooked up and used with propane or natural gas. So you're going to need a heating element. Find out which one works for you. For us, we found that torpedo heaters and or Carlin burners are going to be the best because wherever we've been, whether it was Denver or whether it's here in Missouri, natural gas is much cheaper than electricity. Also, a lot of the buildings we look at do not necessarily have enough amps going to the building to have a huge, massive electric oven. There are also other parts pertaining to the heat source that you use that you may need. If you use a torpedo heater, depending on the size of the oven, you probably will not need any circulation fans. If you use heating elements, depending on the size of your oven, you may need fans inside, circulating fans inside to circulate the heat. That is going to be equipment that is based on what you're doing or how, how big your oven is. It's not necessarily something that will go on this DIY checklist because we don't need one. We haven't needed one. There's many people running torpedo heaters that don't need one. So it's not a mandatory on the 
checklist. Fire block silicone. You need to make sure that this is fire block and not high temp. The high temp ends up not working very well. We tried it from experience. It's better to use the red fire block. You can get this at Lowe's or you can get it at Home Depot. We have found that collectively Lowe's is a bit cheaper with it, at least where we're at. So you might want to go ahead and, and check at Lowe's first. High temp heat block. It's usually red silicone. That's something that you're going to want no matter what size your oven is and no matter what heat source that you're using. Hinges and latches. Again, there's a link down in the description. Amazon affiliate link. So if you click it and buy anything, we get like 30 or 40 cents. We do appreciate you helping us out with the channel and helping support the channel. Regardless of what type of oven or how big of an oven you're building, you're going to need some sort of hinges for the door and you're going to need some sort of latches. The hinges, you're really going to need to get something that is high temp, but you're also going to need to get something that works best for your oven. For us, we found that regular door hinges work well for other people depending on the size especially if it's big they find that the really long hinges that just go are like one one continuous piece for three or four or five feet they have found that those hinges work great for them so that might be something that you look into and for the latches there's mainly one sort of latch that is used we have a picture of it linked down in the description you can see them right here these latches work great the ones that we have a good decent size to them so just make sure you buy big enough latches the first ones we bought were pretty small they worked well but they were pretty small but these here are definitely Definitely a decent size. You will need some sort of latches to hold your door closed. You're also going to need some sort of tadpole or gasket seal to go around the door. Fiberglass tadpole gasket here. You're going to need that to be able to hold in heat and make sure that your oven seals well. So this is something you're going to need no matter what size of oven that you have. A PID controller and a thermostat. So the PID controller that you use could be a little bit different based on if you're using electricity or if you're using a, a heater like a Mr. Heater or something like that and depending on how many elements that you're going to be running. For instance, the PID controller that we have I believe will work with a couple of elements but if you're going to want multiple elements, I believe you're going to need a bigger PID controller. But regardless, you're going to need a thermostat and a PID controller because that is how you're going to operate your heat source so it knows when to turn on and heat up and it knows when to turn off when it's to temp. PID controller and thermostat, you can purchase them together from Amazon. Inkbird works great. There is a link in the description for that. And with that being said, there is your, and with that being said, there's your DIY powder coating oven build checklist. If you want to go ahead and build your own powder coating oven, we do have some videos I'll go ahead and throw links to right up here. Make sure you go check them out. Again, some of our most viewed videos on the channel, so we greatly appreciate it. And what that tells us is these videos are very valuable in helping people build their oven. Remember, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below in the comment section. We love to hear from you. And we want to make content that we know that you're going to enjoy. So give us your thoughts and ideas down below. Thanks for checking out the video. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.